welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, we put a disabled shooter in touch with JCB so he can shoot pheasants for the first time. Do you have an unruly puppy? We have a gun dog training series. First, the legend that is Roy Lupton. There's plenty of the white stuff in this week's programme. Here in Hampshire at the Steventon shoot, it's six inches deep. We're out to film Roy on a pheasant shoot, something we've never done before. We're not altogether sure he understands that a shotgun is meant for shooting birds in the air and not incoming foxes. Hey ho, let's see if he gets booted off on the first drive for concentrating on ground game. Roy is a guest of Keith Gorsuch. They've swapped and shared some stalking outings over the past few years. Keith has kindly offered Roy the chance to join his friends and family day, but Roy's feeling a bit rusty. Whenever I get out on the, the stand, especially um, after being uh, out of the game for so long, the old butterflies are kicking really badly. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, I definitely think it's going to need a bit of luck on this one, but it's just absolutely amazing the feeling that you get when you you, you get out and uh, you're, you're on the stand, everything goes live, and uh, you're ready to begin. But, um, doesn't matter how much you've done it, it still gets exciting. On the next peg down is George with his caddy. This dedicated clay shot is having his first pop at game shooting, so has a friend to talk him through it. More about George later. On with the show and the higher numbered pegs and the walking gun get most of the shooting on this drive. Roy gets off the mark. He can now start to enjoy the day. No, that was brilliant. When you think that we are a week away from the end of the season, that was phenomenal, the amount of birds that are still showing. So uh, uh, I think the, uh, the keeper's going to be very happy with the show they've got here. I know they've got a few more days to finish off, but yeah, you really can't complain about that. As Roy has got his eye in, we try and hinder him by strapping a GoPro camera to the end of his barrel. It ain't pretty, but we get the odd shot. Ooh. There are some good shots here today. Alan next door is a gamekeeper and shows us how it's done. Drive three is a short walk, but the beaters have a way to come. When they do, Roy picks some nice birds and some that need finishing off. With that bird there, it's not what you'd call a sporting bird, but she'd been hit by one of the guns standing in front. And uh, so it was just to administer the coup de grace. Roy also illustrates the most efficient way of using both barrels. He remains calm, refusing to show any emotion. And this is something you notice all across the country, that cool, calm exterior of a gun who's made a great shot. Inside, it's a different story. Sorry. They feel epic. <laughs> Time for elevenses and a chance to get to know our fellow guns. There is a mixed bag of experience here today. First day out on, uh, on game today? It is indeed. Uh, I've been shooting with some 20 odd years clay pigeons. Right. And I will say to you that uh, there's somewhat difference between clay pigeons and the, and, and, the live, and the live bird. Have you found it more tricky getting onto the birds from the, from the clay pigeons or is it...? It's a, I shoot down the line, which are right. all going away birds, yep. and of course you've got the incomers here and you've got the crosses, so yes, there is a variety. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, what does put you off is when you get that little black eye looking at you. <laughs> right, that, they don't do that with clay, and when you miss it, in clay shooting, they say lots. <laughs> Nobody calls out here, do they? But the actual atmosphere with the people, brilliant. That's it. Now, I mean, the com camaraderie is part of it. Absolutely it? brilliant, yes. Uh, it, it's 10 years old, had an air rifle, shot at a sparrow. Winged it, quite, right. felt quite bad about that. Yeah. And then uh, I haven't shot since, you know, in the yeah, drive yeah. until today. Right. And I was interested to see my reactions once I'd shot the first clay. First uh, bird, for, for, yeah. Are you right? First bird. Um, yeah, fine, no problem. Okay, so you've, you've, your conscience is fine at the moment. The adrenaline flows. Exactly. And that's something, that's something that surprised me. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, you shoot at clays, yes. If you win and you get a silver cup, that makes the adrenaline go. But actually shooting the clay, yep. I mean, there's no emotion in that because no. that's what it's all about. But this, because it's live. Yep. Roy's next peg requires some fast reactions. The birds aren't low, but they scoot over the ride, offering only a small window of opportunity. 
there are clearly still plenty of birds about, even at this time of year, and it sounds like the guns have enjoyed a good season. So are you happy with the way that the shooting's gone this year? It's been been very good. We thoroughly enjoyed it, and I think most of the teams of guns have as well. Yeah. Excellent. So they've all gone away with a smile on their faces. Yep, yeah, yeah. Given it's uh, January, there's plenty of birds. Yep. Yeah. And in actual fact, in terms of the fly to we've got two different uh, right. uh, strains of bird here. All right. It's, it's, uh, the Kansas is the bird, but we've got a three quarters uh, cross and a, and a pure Kansas. And believe it or not, uh, we've actually tagged them to uh, with different colour tags to see if we can determine which fly better and which hold better. And some right. things that gamekeepers are very interested in. Yeah. Um, because obviously that's your other side, you've got a, you're on a game farm as well. Right, yeah, yeah. But um, first year we've flown them and three other estates actually bought them from us this year as well. Um, the reports we got back from the keepers on all of the other three estates have said they have held brilliantly and flown brilliantly. And in actual fact, they already know they want the same again for next year. Excellent. With darkness always an issue at this time of year, we power through the next few drives, looking to have a late lunch. Talking of food, Roy's convalescence from his op means he's put on a few pounds, which is why he is not wearing his breeks today. More importantly, it does affect the fit of the gun. All joking aside, I have found that um, when you put on a few pounds or lose a few pounds, the fit to the gun can change. You know, just because uh, you had a, a gun that fitted beforehand doesn't necessarily mean that it will continue to do so if you become a, a little fat porker like I have. Even with the extra padding, Roy and the rest of the guns shoot well and a good day is had by all with a bag of 228, most of which end up in the back of Roy's truck. Best leave off that gun fitting for a few months yet, Mr Lupton. For more information about the Steventon shoot, go to sportinggameservices.co.uk Now from one old stager to another, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sport Britain News. David Cameron's plans for a high-speed rail link could be more damaging to hunting, shooting and fishing than Tony Blair's ban on hound sports. That's the conclusion of backbench Tory MPs who represent rural constituencies in the path of the £30 billion scheme to cut 30 minutes off the rail journey between London Leeds and London Manchester. If your hunt country, shoot or local rivers being affected, please get in touch with us. The proposal to build a barrage across the River Severn has been described as a 24-7 fish mincing machine. The Angling Trust has joined the Wildfowl and Wetlands Trust and the RSPB to come out strongly against the plans. The Trust's National Campaigns Coordinator and former Labour MP Martin Salter says the group support tidal energy development in the Severn but that the current proposal will lead to fish deaths due to sudden changes in water pressure and salinity and through turbine strikes. Winter can be a perilous time, as this American deer found out. The mule deer was caught out after wandering onto a frozen over lake in Golden, Colorado in the US. The buck was stranded on the ice as it struggled to stand up. Rescuers eventually threw a rope around its antlers and towed it off. The summer clay shooting competition season is underway at the Royal Berkshire Shooting School. Its Handicap Classic runs until the final on the 7th of May and there are now £14,000 worth of prizes. If you're watching this on YouTube, click on the screen to see our film about it. Meanwhile, West Midlands Shooting Ground in Shropshire is getting ready for one of the high points of the semi-auto owners year, the Benelli Sporto Championships on Sunday the 19th of May. Click on the screen to see our film about that. And finally, cats famously have nine lives. Foxes are not so lucky, especially not this one, who was ignoring the advice of his friends, the crows. Viewer John Wilkes sent in this film, which is doing the rounds on the internet of what must be the unluckiest fox there was. You are now up to date with Field Sports Britain News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now, Chris Warner shoots clay pigeons from a wheelchair and is keen to try pheasants. JCB rides to the rescue. We're in snowy Hertfordshire today to provide Chris Warner with his first day's pheasant shooting. Chris has shot plenty of clays and is keen to transfer those skills to the pheasants. 
His wheelchair, however, isn't quite up to the off-road trials of a pheasant shoot. Local JCB dealer MKM Agriculture is loaning a JCB Workmax, and even better, Anthony is Chris's driver for the day. This machine we've got here we're going to be using today um, to transport Chris around the chute and um, get him through all the sort of sticky and awkward situations that we, we might uh, come across where we need to go. Um, this vehicle here is equipped with a front opening windscreen, uh, which is quite useful for uh, shooting out the front of rifling, things like that. It's a four-wheel drive machine with a diff lock, so should handle most of the, the sticky situations. Um, it's equipped in the back with uh, these game, mate, game carriers. Um, this is the smaller of the range of game carriers. We can carry roughly 60 brace of, uh, of game on here. Um, it's got twin opening uh, sides, keep the game cool and dry. So I'm hoping that we can have a fantastic day and, and Chris will really enjoy it. The guns start to gather at the Colt Spring House shoot and although the weather is bleak, the company is in good spirits. Chris is eager to make a start. I've never done any game shooting before, this is the first game shoot. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, it's uh, nice to uh, be able to come out and do this because I, I always felt that it would be difficult for me in a wheelchair to be able to do that. The shooting at Colt Spring House is run by gamekeeper Peter Jones. He's a well-known character in the shooting industry and his son, Vinny, is well-known for all sorts of other reasons. Off we go, everyone into the buses and Chris riding shotgun in the work max. Drive number one, Chris is in position and ready to go. The pheasants, not so much. They're still waiting on their morning coffee. The beaters close in and up they go, only to come straight back down as Chris bags his first pheasant, then his second. The first stand is a success all round and the Workmax has its work cut out as the pheasants are piled high on the game mate. On to the second drive and Chris isn't so successful but he is exactly where he wants to be. At least the dogs and the pheasants are getting acquainted. Drinks time and at this time of year an essential pit stop to fend off the frostbite. It's a bit of a trek to the next drive but that's no trouble for the work max. The pheasants are reluctant to get going on the third and who can blame them? It's freezing today but it's amazing how quickly you warm up when the birds start moving. Wait, here they come! A torrent of pheasants appear and Chris is blasting left, right and centre. Another couple for Chris's bag and that seems like a convenient time to stop for lunch. To save time, Peter hosts it in the bus. Unfortunately, not all the vehicles are coping with the elements. There seems to be engine trouble with the beaters bus. Not to worry, Annie, Peter's daughter, keeps the guns entertained on the way to the next drive. It's out of the woods and into the open for the penultimate drive. The guns line up in formation. There are partridge galore on this drive. The pheasants get off lucky and Chris has another species to add to his game card. It's been such a successful day that the bird quota has already been filled. With the failing light, Peter decides it's best to call it a day and tell us a little more about his sporting family. I brought the kids up on here in um, 1973 and taught them to drive Land Rovers and from about five years old, you know, and um, um, it, uh, and then Annie and, and Vin's still coming over, Annie Beach, you know, um, with her three little dogs. and. Uh, as Vin said, it's been emotional, <laughs> but today's been good. Um, you know, a great fun, and, and um, we managed to get Chris about everywhere, which was great. I really had to think that one because to get him into the wood where there was ditches all around, but uh, we actually overcame that. You know, um, so everybody was absolutely delighted, and we only did four drives. In the lodge, everyone is defrosting in front of the fire, and it's a chance for a cuppa and a few thank yous. I'd just like to thank you, everybody, for what you've done and, and made it so enjoyable for him. Thank you very welcome. much. Chris's first day pheasant shooting is not going to be his last. Everybody that put the shoot on, um, they couldn't have done enough for me, uh, especially also with JCB, with what, what they lent us. Um, that helped us, helped me. I wouldn't have been able to do it without that. Um, 
but I wouldn't have been able to do it without all the guys here at the shoot either. The JCB has meant Chris has been given access all areas and it's been a fantastic opportunity for all to show that with a bit of effort, a game day is an option for one and all. Now to get your gun dog to a perfect pitch, it's our new gun dog training series. A bird lands out of sight of your dog, and as far as the retriever is concerned, your dog and often you are flying blind. Here are top gun dog trainer Ricky Maloney's training tips with real life examples. First retrieve end gun or a gun further down shot it. Uh, dog hasn't seen anything of that retrieve whatsoever. So he's got to believe me that he goes out and he runs until he either finds the game, touches scent or until I say, whoa, that's the area that I want you to settle down. Okay, what command? Show, show me the command, which means this is the line. So if I'm lining my dog up, one hand, line the dog up, go back. That's the command I'm going to give the dog. It comes right. down to footwork and heel work. I've trained my dog about heel work. Wherever I am, as a retriever, wants to be at the side of me. So wherever I turn with the gun, the dog's in a line, I can then go back. If it's seen it, it just gets the dog's nerve. If the dog comes off the line, do you then call it back and start again? Depends on the dog, depends on the dog's temperament. If you've got a very sensitive dog and you keep calling it back, you could get it very sticky. You could go out five yards, stop and look at it and say, am I doing the right thing, am I coming back? So dog training really is about looking at the type of dog you've got from, from eight weeks of age when you acquire it as a puppy and assessing that dog, seeing how it ticks, whether it's bold, whether it's shy, anything in between, whether it's hard hunting, whether it's a dog that runs in a straight line naturally, and then you'll tailor your training according to the puppy, the youngster you've got in front of you. Second retrieve, nice shot, well done. Thank you very much, <laughs> yes, yep. <laughs> the second retrieve, it landed and it ran. Now, right. you're disconnecting with the dog the moment it's gone over the wall, actually, because it can see the game. It's not listening to you, it's going straight off that, doesn't it? Do dog's got to deal with that. That's what I've got a dog for. Uh, too much handling, too much overtraining, and you get a dog that might touch that fall, but not follow it up. So the art in training a good dog is balance. Ricky Maloney runs Ribblesdale Labradors. This series on gun dog training tips is brought to you by Skinner's Pet Foods, maker of the field and trial range of gun dog feeds. Visit skinnerspetfoods.co.uk. From gun dogs to the wider world of hunting on the internet, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting, shooting and fishing videos that YouTube has to offer. We've been away, sorry about that, lots of your suggestions to catch up with. The first is Ireland's most outward-facing shooting group. Invited to Ballin Atre Estate in County Cork by the Irish Hawking Club, the Rathcormac Gun Club presents Goshawk Hunting in Ireland. Tricky thing to film hawking, but they get good action nonetheless. Stuart Taylor sends us his video of gun cam pigeon shooting on Raven in the Woods on the auspicious 12th of December last year. 12 12, 12. He was out with his dad and they got a few. Now we have uncovered the Tommy Cooper of shooting videos. Fur on the ground attempts to make his own scope cam out of sticky back plastic and a pair of Val's old knickers with hilarious consequences. In case you wondered what the blurry white target is, it's Frosty the Snowman in Fur on the Ground's garden. Happily, Fur on the Ground is able to laugh at himself. From Tommy Cooper to Ant and Deck, Carl and Alex Smith have shot to start him in Angler's Mail magazine as no-nonsense teenagers devoted to course angling. They turn up on Angler's Mail TV and on their own channel called, unsurprisingly, Carl and Alex Smith. In this film, Carl or Alex is out feed fishing for bream and small stream roach, and he catches a goldfish. Now we get numerous requests for films from Edgun USA, and here's an unusual one that finds its way into the angling double we like to put in the middle of hunting YouTube. Ted the Edgun, the god of air guns and supreme being of Holdover, is in the Bahamas spearfishing, and of course it is a great film with sharks and everything. Fat guy with a katana sends us motor hunters bike hog hunting with a message i think this guy could use some more views he's tearing up the australian outback in pursuit of feral hogs armed with a dirt bike a helmet cam and a beretta 92 and so he is catching a pig with his bare hands in this film for reference motor hunters five steps to biking a boar are one choose the biggest boar two bend him from the rough terrain of the gully three outpace him four wrap him up and five throw and pin him much the same advice is offered to the wallabies before international tests 
This next film is a challenge. It's an interview with Franz Albrecht von Oettingen, who is the George Digweed of Wild Boar Shooting, only younger and, with the light behind him, slightly better looking. He's the pin-up pop star of Continental Hunting. He appears in the Hunter's video Wild Boar Fever film, where he shoots seven in a row. If you don't speak German and you want to watch this film, you will need to turn on not just YouTube's automatic subtitles, but also its automatic subtitles translation feature, which turns the interview from inexplicable to side-splittingly inexplicable. But you will above all get to see some truly astonishing shooting, and he's not even 30 years old. Makes you spit. Finally, a viewer wants to highlight the work of the channel Classic Bowhunts, which, a bit like the Caves of Lascaux, is posting ancient hunting library footage in order to preserve it. This film is called Bill Negley Elephant Bowhunt. Bill Negley was out after elephants in the 1950s with a recurved bow. It wasn't great for the elephants, but it's near the top of the list of things they said could not be done. You can click on any of these films to watch them. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, we are back next week, and if you're watching this on YouTube, don't hesitate to hit the subscribe button that's somewhere around the outside of the screen there. Or go to our webpage, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter, or scroll down to the bottom of the page, pop your email address into our constant contact box, and we will contact you about our programme, which is at 7pm UK time every Wednesday. This has been Field Sports Britain. <laughs>